Hey guys, it's Whirlwood here again. Figured I'd make another video. I'm down here playing with knives. Earlier I mentioned that, well, I was asked to take a picture when I mentioned that I had a knife from Terrio that came back with a real good edge on it. And I ended up making a video. It was my first video, but I ended up making a video because it's real hard to show a knife as sharp in a picture. Like I said, you can have an edge that looks great on camera, great looks great in hell, even looking at it in person, the edge can look perfect on it, and then it can end up just sliding over right over what you're cutting. Now, I'll start as a reference point, I'll start with this BK-14. Now, I've had this thing a long time, you know, it's been stripped, beat on, etched, you know, stropped, straw sharpened, everything, you know, and um, I like it a lot, you know, it still cuts. Now I should mention, I don't own any stones. I don't have any sharpening guided systems. I have a strop, a loaded strop. I've had the same strop for over a year now. Um, it came three stages. It came, one's loaded with um, chromium oxide, the other one's one micron diamond paste, and then the last is bare leather. I've used it for all my knives. Now, all my knives could use a real good sharpening now, but, I mean, they still cut. You know, so as long as it cut, I'll be all right with it. I need to quit buying knives and buy something to sharpen them with. But um, this is a good knife. You know, I like it quite a bit, you know. Now, let's move on to the BK24. Now, I ended up putting the scales and the sheath that I got from Cam with the BK24 instead of the 14. Now, I've had it a little while, but I haven't really used it very much whatsoever. Um, I... I think I opened up a box or two with it, and then I um, made one little feather stick with it. It hasn't ever been stropped or sharpened. Now, if I can get in here, I don't know if I can. I never even worried about, really, it looks like it has a really, really nice edge on it. You know, it looks like it's really, really sharp. But, the truth is, it's not. You know, it, it, it barely bites, it mostly a slide over what you're trying to cut. Now, like I said, I haven't stropped this or anything, and this goes back to what, like James was saying, where paying $100 or more for a neck knife, you know, this is a great knife. I'm not saying anything bad about it at all. It's a great knife, it's great steel, everything. But, you know, you're paying $50, $60 for a knife, when you get it and it ain't shaving hair as clean as possible and ain't taking paper apart, you know, clean and everything without you having to do anything to it, you know, how can you really complain? I mean, you got a good knife made out of good steel for fifty, sixty dollars, you know. Now, this knife, you know, I paid a hundred dollars for it when I first got it, and it came sharp. But I when mean, I sent it to James, I had screwed it up with the work sharp. And I no longer have the work sharp because of that. But um, it came sharp and everything when I screwed it up. Sent it to James. And this just goes to show when, when you get something from a custom maker, it's just so much different, you know. I mean, it cuts so much cleaner, smoother. The edge is just wonderful on it, you know. And James didn't make this knife. But he made it a new knife because, I mean, it's better than when I first got it. I mean, I don't know how good I can get it. You can see he didn't just sharpen it. I mean, he changed the geometry on it, man. Not real good at this whole photography crap. But he really hooked that up. Now, this BK-24, it, it could use a, use a lot of work. Let's see what else I can show you all while I'm here. I really like this Buck Vantage Pro. This is another good one. It's built like a tank. Now I've had it a while, and you see I'm beating on it. I mean, it's been it's been stropped. Um, I've never put any stones on it or anything. There we go. But I've stropped it. Yard scrap of ore came with a thick edge on it, and it's been dropped a lot too. Go 
back to the 24 again. And now, if you was to look, just to look at these edges, you'd swear the 24 was sharper than this scrap of wood. Well, let's do it more fair. You'd swear the 24 was sharper than the 14 just by looking at them. I probably can't get that in the camera good enough for y'all to see it. But you would swear this was sharper. But the truth is, is it needs a lot of damn work. Now let's move on to something more fun anyway. <laughs> Here we got the Dan Keffler competition cutter. This is one badass knife, I'll tell you what. Now, we're talking about edges. Now this is .156 S35DN and um, like I said, he, he hooked that up. Now this is .35 thick right here, I mean it's, it's a beast man, I mean when you see it, it's a chopper, you know, I mean you think it's just as good, it's just good for chopping. This, there, ain't, there ain't nothing this thing don't cut and cut well. Let's see if I can running out of paper here that I ain't messed up already. There we go. Let's get that off. And yes, I'm sitting here cutting up bills because that's the best damn use of bills in my opinion. Now. That'd be a lot funner to be chopping through some shit right now, but it's late and I don't have anything to chop. But let's see. The power, the power chopping area is in here. It's not up here, you know. That's up in here, but we got here. I mean, it's just a beast. See what else we got here. <laughs> this is a joke. I mean, 